Welcome to CrushTheStreet.com's weekly market wrap-up. We'll start things off in the equity sector, which saw some small gains after yesterday's presidential debate, which was generally considered to be won by Mitt Romney. While the overall viewership may have preferred Mr. Romney's more polished presentation, economists remain divided 50-50 over who would be the better president, according to a recent Yahoo Finance article. In either case, the markets responded positively today and has been on a choppy incline since last Friday's close, with the S&P 500 being the biggest winner, currently up about 1.3% from a week ago. The market gains today came against a backdrop of a noticeably weaker U.S. dollar, which closed under the significant 79.50 technical support line. Part of the bearishness could be attributed to the release of the FOMC meeting minutes, which stated in part, members generally judge that without additional policy accommodation, economic growth might not be strong enough to generate sustained improvement in labor market conditions. In fact, Chicago Federal Reserve Bank President Charles Evans advocated allowing the inflation rate to rise to 3% if it meant that unemployment will fall below 7%. However, some members voiced opposition with the minutes going on to state several participants reiterated their concern that additional purchases might complicate the committee's efforts to withdraw monetary policy accommodation when it eventually became appropriate to do so, raising the risk of undesirably high inflation in the future and potentially unmooring inflation expectations. With the fluctuation in the dollar index, some opportunities did come to light this week, most recently a potentially profitable entry point into crude oil investments. Yesterday, the price of crude dropped below the key psychological level of $90 a barrel to ultimately lose over 4% against the prior day's close, a one-day loss not seen since June 21st. This presented an enticing offer to buy up units in leveraged ETFs, particularly ProShares Ultra, or ticker symbol UCO. While energy ETFs are generally considered risky due to both the volatility of the underlying asset and the financial viability of the fund itself, I personally chose to invest in UCO due to the fact that it has an established track record and recent volume levels average over 2 million. Looking at the technicals, we see that there is a long-term support at the 29 dollar level and with a one-year price range of 23 at the low and 50 at the high we can fairly assume that there is a lot more upside potential than there is downside watch for any wild swings in the US dollar index and if crude happens to drop below 90 again consider loading up on some UCO before we move over to the precious metals, it's important to discuss the latest uprisings in the Middle East to bring some additional context to this sector. According to the Wall Street Journal, protests erupted in the main commercial hub of Tehran, where calls for President Ahmadinejad to step down were heard amongst tens of thousands of merchants, shopkeepers, and opposition activists. One of the main drivers for this protest was the sudden decline in the Iranian currency, which lost over a third of its value against the U.S. dollar. Although it is preposterous to compare the United States economy to that of Iran, the important point to remember is that current Currency devaluation is a deadly reality, and any portfolio should include at least some position in physical gold and silver. So with that, let's take a deeper look at the metals. Today we'll discuss silver only as gold also shows the same technical traits. While today is considered a victory for the bulls, this is the 15th session since the announcement of QE3 and we have basically moved up the spot price by a whopping 30 cents. Here's some other points to consider. First, the positive price action is occurring on low volume which has been declining since September 13th. What's worse, an article posted by MarketWatch.com stated that over 70% of the post QE3 volume can be attributed to momentum traders as opposed to veteran commodities traders. Second, the market movements this week did not appreciably change the momentum indicators, which still hint towards a possible pullback. Third, the relative strength indicator has crept back up over the 70 line and any significant upside movement will surely signal an overbought condition. Finally, I'd like to point out that the staircase rally that we've had recently resembles a similar pattern that we saw beginning in January and ending with what is known to conspiracy theorists as the Leap Day Massacre. While the patterns are occurring under different contexts, the similarity is that both times, after a month-long rally, 
prices began to show weakness, with the upper and lower Bollinger Bands converging. In the first pattern, silver continued to surge upward after closing near the upper Bollinger Band before getting chopped down on that infamous day. Today, the price also closed near the upper band, and it remains to be seen where we go from here. Personally, I'm a little worried that if we get higher prices, we're playing with technical fire, and I'm not sure how sustainable an upward move will be given the volume. Also, tomorrow's jobs report will add a significant variable, with a positive report likely to add confidence back to the US dollar, which would weaken the metals. And that will do it for this edition. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. For more unconventional ideas, please visit CrushTheStreet.com.